Hello friends, my name is RagePanda1, and today we're going to talk about one of the most hated characters in the game, which I think is for little to no reason, except for that people don't necessarily understand how the game works all the time, and they overlook huge mechanics about people's kits and just pretend they aren't there. And as always, we're going to start this video off by talking about what those skills and abilities actually are. Her passive skill is going to just straight up increase healing. That's pretty cool, because that's like one of the main things she does, is healing. Speaking of healing, her ultimate heals the teammate with the lowest health by a huge percent of her attack. This is a big heal. It is a very big heal. It's only on one character though, and it is an ultimate. And that's the thing that people don't like. And I kind of agree with them. I honestly kind of wish that it was maybe just a little bit smaller of a heal and that it hit two or three of your teammates. That would probably be better for her. But then again, we have our new Orc White Eyes character coming that basically does exactly that. And so if this was all that she did was occasionally heal one person for real big numbers, that would be not good, okay? That would not be good enough to put her on the team. The thing that people are ignoring, however, is that she increases all teammates' defense by 252%. Now, it's my understanding that that means fortitude. Why... On God's green earth, did they not just write fortitude on the stupid thing? I don't understand. I don't know. But when you click on here, you can see that fortitude determines your champion's defensive potential. I think that if we apply common sense and using our context clues, we could say that we're increasing fortitude with this. So then why do I think that's good? Well, I'll tell you why I think that's good. Number one, Vigor is increasing your fortitude. Your Guardian Stone can be increasing your fortitude. We have a trait that can be increasing your fortitude. Now, my theory about what's actually happened is that decisions were made about the quality of this character before people understood the mechanics of the game. And when their characters were not built to have any fortitude in the first place, I'm sure nobody was trying her with Loyal or doing what I will recommend later, which is putting her on teams with people that specifically have a naturally high fortitude, then of course you're not even going to notice this skill. If they're, if she's multiplying a fortitude stat that is barely existent already, then it's going to seem bad. But guess what? If you start stacking that and you're getting vigor levels and you know you love this chick, so you're putting some guardian stone points into getting fortitude, then guess what? you're going to get to a point where you're basically only taking damage from ultimates. From what I have been told in this game, Fortitude directly reduces the number of damage that you take, which makes it not as good against big ultimates, because big damage, you're taking a small number off. It doesn't work that well. But against smaller attacks or ultimates that do multiple hits, then you're going to be taking bigger and bigger chunks off of that. So if a basic attack is hitting for... 150 units of something and I'm reducing that by a hundred then I'm taking a lot less damage But if the ultimate then hits for a thousand and I'm taking off a hundred you can see that that's a smaller change That's why people don't really love fortitude and they don't try to stack it However, if you can take as much as possible off then you're gonna be doing better at surviving That means that this chick is only good if you're building for it You can't just throw her on any team and expect great success Yes, the defense is going to make a difference for you, and you are going to feel it. You're going to feel like you're dying a lot less when she's on your team. Not just because of the heal, but because of this defense boost, which is absolutely massive. So when we get into traits, we're not just going to have to talk about her traits. We're going to talk about everybody's traits on your team. Because if you're running her, then I think that you want to run loyal on everybody. Look at this. At level 18, fortitude increased by 40%. So that's probably the single most important tip in this video, which is why I'm harping on it kind of a lot. If you're running female Aeson and you love her, and I think it's fine to love her, it's fine to run people on your team that don't do any damage. You just need to understand what she's actually doing and how can I multiply that effect and take advantage of it. I have a really cool idea for a team that takes advantage of that, which I'll be sharing at the end of the video. So our whole gosh darn team is going to have loyal on it. Everyone. Our whole team should have energetic on it also. Because number one, you're building defensive. That's like the whole point of putting this person on your team. Number two, energetic is probably the best trait in the game. It is good on everybody. There is not a single case where you should not put energetic because there's something better. 
There's just too many systems that are giving you health. Health makes you survive the burst mages. I'm not gonna say that you have to use it. I'm just saying it's the best thing to use on every character. If you look at my previous videos where I've said slot in defense if needed, Whatever trade I said to switch out for defense, you may as well make it energetic because that's just the way the game is now after Vigor and after Guardian Stone. It's just too good. So we know that we want energetic and we want loyal on her. You can go a couple of directions, okay? Her heal does scale off of her strength, so Brutal is good to put on her for that reason. However, you might actually just want this person to be ulting as often as possible to get those heals out as often as possible. Personally, I think that's the better way to go for this character. There are some people that think that you should put agile and focused on every single character and you just, you go for little baby alts or you go for big alts with no defense and just hope that you win. I don't think that's a great strategy. Personally, I have not put it on a whole team and tested it. Maybe that would change my mind, but that's resource intensive and I don't have the Evnians up to be able to put that on. So I don't value that build enough to go out of my way to do that because I think that the sacrifices are not worth it. Agile is going to increase our attack speed. And the reason that that's important isn't because we want to do more damage, it's because it charges our alt this much faster from just doing damage. We can see that focused increases our energy gain rate. So whenever we gain energy, we will gain more. This is a very small version of it. I don't have a good Yvnayan. As I've said, I haven't leveled up the companion and I, I don't get good stuff from summons. What are you, one of those people that gets good stuff from summons? Just kidding, I've gotten a couple, it's fine. I think that's personally the best build. Her heals are already huge, and if you're foregoing the Brutal in favor of being tanky and getting a lot of ultimates off, I think that that's better. However, if you wanted to, you could maybe just put Agile on and then go for Brutal. That's fine. Or if you just want all of your ultimates to be as big as possible, then you could go for Brutal and Aggressive. There's nothing special to note about her positioning. She's one of the people that loves to be in slot two just so she's not getting targeted and therefore she gets to do her support abilities as much as possible. But when we come to the synergy section, that's where this chick gets really in depth. So a thing that we're looking at when we are picking our characters to have some synergy is we're looking at this number. We're looking at base fortitude in the renowned champion screen so we can see who is starting off with more. Because when you're starting off with more, then your Vigor boosts, your Guardian Stone boosts, and the female Aeson boosts are all going to have a greater effect. So if you want to make the best team with her, then that's what you're looking for. And one of the best people to put with her is the male Karguk. The reason is because when he does his ultimate, he's going to be increasing his fortitude by 30%. He is also going to be taunting all of the enemies to be punching him in the face. So usually he does that and he falls over dead pretty quick because all of the little chip damage from little bitty nothings hitting him adds up pretty quick when it's everybody on the enemy team hitting him. However, when you're building all of these layers of defense and you're getting a 30% bonus on it, he can actually take a hit at least long enough that the female ASN will be able to heal him back up. And this male Karguk is another guy that people are saying maybe A tier on these tier lists, you know? not the greatest, usually you're not ever gonna use him. Well, if you stick with the meta that everybody's telling you is the only way to play the game, then yes, he's not as good. But when you're actually building a team that's based around this specific thing, then it becomes good. Our Devala clan, now that is a huge opportunity. These assassins have fortitude at the levels of tank characters. These assassins, that do a ton of AOE damage and heal themselves like crazy have the fortitude of tank champions. Both of them. Now guess what? These guys are going to count as a DPS and if you have the ability to run both of them, then they work well as a pseudo frontliner. She doesn't work good as a frontliner because she drops aggro. He doesn't work good as a frontliner because he can die too quickly. However, when you have both of them in tandem and you have it set up so she takes the damage first, drops aggro onto him, and then he has the chance to heal up and use his ultimate, then they can work as a frontliner together. And they are matching the thing that we're looking for with our female ASN, which is a huge fortitude stat. However, if we look at the Yvnians, they are like a 25% drop in fortitude 
from the other ones that we were talking about. Female Ugril is also a good option here because just being a warrior, you stand to be a little tankier in general. But if you're playing with a female Aeson, then you're building for sustain and defense. And female Ugril can put out decent damage and she also has great sustain and a relatively high starting fortitude. I think that makes her a really good character to put in combination with our female Aeson. In general, there are not good marksmen to put with the female Aeson, except for the Tide Storms. I think that you could put a male Tide Storm on this team, and you'd be pretty happy with it. And he's also going to pull people together, which is great, because just about everybody on the team I'm going to recommend wants that to happen. To give you a comparison, our male Tide Storm is 104 base fortitude, but if we wanted to go with our Trevain, we've got our female at 75 and our male at 76k. That's very low. That is That does not work well with our female Aeson because we're trying to boost this number up. That's her best thing that she does. Have I harped on that enough? Have I gotten that point across? Man, you probably clicked off this video 20 minutes ago because you were <laughs> sick of hearing that. So you're running your female Aeson naturally. We've got both Devala. We've got our male Karguk and we've got a male Tidestorm. That is a ton of damage. We've got really good sustain. We use both of our... Devala to count as that extra frontliner, and that gives us the leeway to be able to have the female Aeson on the team, even though she's not doing any damage. Because usually, if you do two frontliners and a female Aeson, then it's kind of hard to justify having her on the team because you have too many people not doing damage. But in our team comp, we have a ton of great damage, and even our tank does a high amount of damage for a tank. He doesn't do a high amount of damage, he does a high amount of damage for a tank. So I think that that would be a highly defensive team with great sustain that you would get a lot of mileage out of. And that's the way that you need to be thinking when you're trying to use these people that everybody is telling you they're worthless and you, if you put them on your team, that's why you're losing. Well, no, you're losing because you're using characters that you're not using correctly. It's not because they can't be used. So if you're having a hard time with a character and you really like them, then you know what? Message me and ask me how we could work together to find a solution to make that character good and make them work with your team. I'm available on the Discord. The official Discord's details are in the description of the video. And you can just direct message me or mention me in the comments in the regular game chat on that Discord. I'm happy to help you. Let's figure it out together. If you have enjoyed these tips, then I would really appreciate it if you'd throw a like on the video and consider subscribing so that you don't miss them for the other characters. And I do have one more thing I want to talk about real quick, and that is for the consistent viewers of the channel. You may notice that I suddenly have 10,000 diamonds, and as a free-to-play account, you're probably wondering how I got a lot of thousands of diamonds overnight. I will show you here that I am still at zero dollars spent on this account, although that may not continue. The developers have created a program to assist content creators and to sort of give us a thank you for making content on the game. And part of that package includes a bit of gems here and there. The first installment was bigger than all of the other ones will be in the future, I assume, but the first time it was for 6,000 diamonds. That's a thing that's going to continue. It'll probably be a lower amount of diamonds than that, but that show up weekly. And I don't think that I can continue to call the series a free-to-play series when I'm getting injected with so many extra diamonds. I don't think that's fair to you guys. I still will be creating content that it caters to free-to-play people. I'm not going to be a whale and spend thousands of dollars on the game, although I do think that supporting the game monetarily is good, especially if you play it every day. Of course, they deserve a little bit of a kickback for that, and I think the challenge fund is the best way to do that. I think that if you are comfortable spending money on the game, then the way that you should spend money on the game is through the challenge fund. So I'm still zero dollars spent here, and I probably will get the challenge fund eventually. And then that opens up exciting opportunities for the future for me. That's gonna allow me to open up my account to getting more things, more summons, more testing done so that I can make better content for you guys. So I'm going to no longer be calling this a free-to-play series, even though I haven't spent money on it yet. 
And it's probably going to be around when the white eyes come out. If, I, if I'm close to getting the companion, I'm probably just going to try to make that happen with a little bit of, little bit of money. Throwing a little sauce on it here and there, you know. And the other opportunity that opens up is that in the future, if content is drying up or there's a period of time where there's not as much exciting stuff going on to be covering, then it'll be a great time for me to revisit the free-to-play on a different server where I'm not getting those rewards and starting from scratch and I can just make a, you know, like a weekly update or something. So the series itself is still in good health. It's still going to be happening regularly. It's just not going to be called free-to-play anymore. So I hope you understand that. And I appreciate you watching the video. I have been Rage Panda one and I will see you in the next one.